Hi guys, Miss Nikki here again, and we're back at the Public Library of Mount Vernon in Knox County, and we are doing Book Adventurers Club, and that is like uh, where I'm gonna read you a little bit of a book, and we're gonna work on the next craft bag coming up that I'll be sending out. So you see this? That's gonna be really, really neat. You guys are gonna, you'll be able to pick those up and make them yourselves, so super fun. It does ask for graphite pencil, so I found these or whatever. They're actually not too much, but you'll get all this stuff in your packet if you come pick it up. But for other ones that don't pick up one, all this stuff you should be able to do pretty easy on your own. So we're gonna start off taking our little graphite pencil. And you see my little example one that I did here? It does like a half circle. So, and then when you get your directions, this is my attempt at doing that <laughs> to show you what to make but you'll actually get this template. So you just wanna kind of, you can go inside it if you want. And do it like this. Now I'm just starting it off here. I'll make it a little bit thicker too. I'm just kind of give you an idea or whatever. Or you can even go around it if you want. It honestly, it, it's probably not gonna matter. It's however you wanna do it. But as long as you, and we'll go back and touch those up. All right, now, the only other thing is, is I don't have the colored lights yet. So I've got the red, we'll be able to try. We got some of them. And then we've also got a clear one so you guys can do this at home too if you want to like color it in a little bit we'll color in this one and you want to make your little signs like i did here you're going to want a positive and your negative sign so you know which is which now when you look on your light it doesn't exactly tell you so we may have to try it a couple times so you see this little guy you're going to tape him down where he is on the thing here. All right. You see it's on, you wanna get it on there pretty good. Oh, and I did the positive and negative on the wrong side. Just kidding. So see, we're gonna do it down here. And that just kind of gives you a guide, a guideline as to where you wanna put your battery. Cause see, you've got the little positive then the negative. So the negative is actually gonna go right there and the positive will go on this side. All right, guys, so it got a little tricky on the one side, but we'll go ahead and I'll just show you. Now, sometimes, let's see, how do I have? Yep, I should have it right. You see it? It's lighting up a little bit, there it goes. So you just put your battery down where you see it. I got the negative and positive here. Um, be careful though, because when we were playing around just now, you can get a tiny little bit of a shock maybe from the wire from the light. So as always, make sure you have a parent or guardian or somebody you know with you. So there was that one. And then this little guy here, the second light, he's not wanting to work. So we've got this one. Now, you see I had that, oh, maybe I didn't have it turned right. There it goes. Can you see it? It lights up, it's pretty neat. Pretty fun little experiment. So yeah, hopefully you guys can come in and grab one and it'll have most everything in here and it'd be really neat to try it. So I'm gonna read a little bit of a book now. All right guys, so I found this little book, it's called The Push Cart War. So I know we were doing kind of like a traffic light experiment. So I went through and tried to find different books and this is one I came up with, so. It's by Jean Merrill, and then it's illustrated by Ronnie Solbert. All right, let's get to chapter one. So chapter one, how it began, the Daffodil Massacre. The push cart war started on the afternoon of March 15th, 2026, when a truck ran down a push cart belonging to a flower peddler. Daffodils were scattered all over the street. The push cart was flattened and the owner of the push cart was pitched head first into a pickle barrel. The owner of the cart was Morris the Florist. The driver of the truck was Mac, 
who at that time was employed by Mammoth Moving. Mack's full name was Albert P. Mack, but in most accounts of the pushcart war, he is referred simply as Mack. It was near the corner of 6th Avenue and 17th Street in New York City that the trouble occurred. Mack was trying to park his truck. He had a load of piano stools to deliver, and the space in which he was hoping to park was not quite big enough. When Mack saw that he could not get his truck into the space by the curb, he yelled at Morris the florist to move his push cart. Morris's cart was parked just ahead of Mack. Morris had been parked in this spot for half an hour and he was doing a good business, so he paid no attention to Mack. Mack pounded on his horn. Why should I move? I'm in business here. Maybe if Mack had spoken courteously to Morris, Morris would have tried to push his cart forward a few feet. But Morris did not like being yelled at. He was a proud man. Besides, he had a customer. So when Mack yelled again, move, Morris merely shrugged. Move yourself, he said, and went on talking with his customer. Look, I got to unload 90 dozen piano stools before five o'clock. I got to sell two dozen bunches of daffodils, Morris replied. Tomorrow they won't be so fresh. In about two minutes they won't be so fresh, Mac said. As several students of history have pointed out, Mac could have simply nudged Morris's cart a bit with the fender of his truck. The truck was so much bigger than the push cart that the slightest push would have rolled it forward. Not that Morris would have liked being pushed. Still, that was what truck drivers generally did when smaller vehicles were in their way. But Mac was annoyed. Like most truck drivers of the time, he was used to having his own way. Mammoth Moving was one of the biggest trucking firms in the city, and Mac did not like a push cart peddler arguing with him. When Mac saw that Morris was not going to move, he backed up his truck. Morris heard him gunning his engine, but did not look around. He supposed Mac was going to drive on down the block, but instead of that, Mac drove straight into the back of Morris's push cart. Daffodils were flung for a hundred feet, and Morris himself, as we have said, was knocked into a pickle barrel. This was the event that we now, now know as the Daffodil Massacre. These facts about the Daffodil Massacre are known because a boy who had just been given a camera for his birthday happened to be standing by the pickle barrel. His name was Marvin Seeley. Oh, I think we're going to leave it at that. So, yeah, we won't go into chapter two. So, if you like the start of this book, you should definitely get a hold of us. And we are just doing the curbside pickup as of right now. So, just give us a call. All right? Thanks.